I saw myself dying. And it it kind of it kind of threw me off a little bit because I thought I was going to live this long life, but that all I kept seeing was my death replayed to me over and over and over again. The date of my death, the t- uh, the moment of my death, not the exact date, like in this is on the uh, the eleventh or the twelfth, but the month, and mm-hmm. in that time frame, and I saw it. And so I told my family, I was like, I'm going to die next spring. And they're like, what do you mean you're going to die? I'm like, I'm going to die a very horrible death. I want to prepare you all so you're not caught off guard. And my sister would be like, oh, God, you and your like, what, what, why are you getting this from? I said, well, for one, the woman in the jungle told me who I trained with. And two, I also saw it in Delphi. And when I went to a psychic, they did a tarot card reading and they kept saying that uh, they decided to look at my palm and they looked at my palm and they said, your palm, your lifeline stops and then it starts again, a new lifeline. And so I was like, I guess I'm going to die because I've been told this and I feel it and I don't know why I have to go through this. And my aunt said to me that if that's what the spirits want, then that's what the spirits want. And I was like, oh, that's really helpful. So I basically, you know, did whatever. And about springtime came, I went back to, I went to the jungle, came back within a month of coming back. I shot a commercial with Ellen DeGeneres called uh, Dance. And two days after the commercial, I wake up in the morning and there's a spirit on the edge of my bed looking at me. And it said to me, are you ready? And I said, ready for what? And it said, ready for us to rip you apart. And I was like, why? And it said, because that's the only way that this, these, these gifts that you've asked for can happen. And immediately I was like, yes. And I got up, the whole room started spinning. I fell to the floor. I crawled on the floor, my, to a phone. I called my friend, um, my friend Marcus. Marcus came as fast as he could. I was hyperventilating on the floor. I couldn't stand. He picks me up, puts me in his truck, starts driving me to the hospital. I have a seizure. My head smashes into the dashboard over and over. So he calls. I wake up out of the seizure. The ambulance is putting me in an ambulance from his car. I'm in the ambulance. I have eight rolling seizures again. I look at the person in the ambulance and said, I've never had a seizure before. This is fascinating. This is what a human seizure feels like. He goes, what? I said, well, you know, it's a human experience. It's a seizure. I've never had one. So now I know what it talks about. People say I have a seizure. I know what it feels like. So then he's like, you're very interesting by saying that. That's very strange. No one has ever said that to me. And so then he drives me to the hospital at at the Los Angeles um, General Hospital. No, was it? Yeah, General Hospital. And they pushed me in and they had no rooms available and they left me like by the in emergency area. My friend Marcus comes in, he grabs my hand and he's like, it's okay, everything's gonna be okay, just breathe. All of a sudden the room turns into this liquid and everything starts melting and it's pure light. And this woman steps out of the light and she tells me it's time. So I, all of a sudden Marcus goes, who are you talking to just now? You're, you were talking out loud, like you're talking in your sleep, but I kept trying to get your attention. You weren't responding. And then I said, I'm going to die right now. I don't want to, I, I, I want to, he goes, no, you're not. You're overreacting. You're not going to die. And I started crying. I'll never forget it. And I said, it always brings up emotions for me. <laughs> I don't want to die alone. Please don't leave me. I want to die with someone by my side. I don't want to be alone when I die, you know? And so he's, I need to go to a doctor. I need to get a doctor. And so he runs to get a doctor and he comes back and I'm like, he goes, when is it going to happen? I said, they told me it's going to start in a couple of minutes. And then all of a sudden I felt like someone ripping my body apart, like literally ripping my body apart. I felt knives and things cutting my arms off, cutting my organs out. And what was happening was that my body was shutting down. So all of my organs were shutting down because my kidney stopped working and my potassium levels were shooting way up high. So it felt like to me, from a medical standpoint, as the way my doctor explains it, is that your organs were shutting down one by one. And that's why you felt that intense pain in different areas of your body. But I felt it. And it was the most excruciating pain 
And then when that happened, then I lost my breathing. So I couldn't breathe. So I was, I was pounding my throat and they had to put a hole in my neck to get the air out. And I still wasn't getting the air out that strong. Then my lungs collapsed. Then my heart stopped. And that's when I finally died. And it was such an experience because while you're dying, you see everything. It's not like you're blacked out and it just happens and now you're on the other side. Like you see yourself dying, but you can't do anything about it, you know? And I remember screaming. I thought I was screaming, but it was actually in my head because I actually couldn't breathe. Make it stop. It's too painful. I can't handle it. And I kept hearing the voice say, it's getting painful because you're fighting us. Like, don't mm. fight us. Just surrender. And finally, the pain got to a all high level that I just finally just said, forget it. I can't fight anymore because I'm a fighter. Let me tell you, and I'm a Scorpio. So I'm a quadruple Scorpio. So I'm like really about holding on. Right. And I was trying to hold on for my dear life and it wasn't happening. And it was so scary. But at the same time, I felt like I was prepared my whole life for it through all my shamanic experiences and being this spiritualist person. Um, yeah. And then I went, I, I went um, into this very dark space of, and then light was coming in. And then all of a sudden I realized that I was actually watching my life being shown to me. I was watching myself being born and I was watching myself, I was watching my mother give birth. And then I was watching everything I did and how everything I ever said or thought and how it affected the world. I didn't know that when you argue with someone, you're actually creating chaos energy that is causing hurricanes and causing someone in the hospital who's fighting for their life. All of these things are magnetizing negative flows or positive flows into the different fields of consciousness. I was so dumbfounded in, and when I say dumbfounded, not like I was dumbfounded in the sense that it was a go, it was very gobsmacked. I was very in awe of how much we affect things on a, not just on a global level, but on a universal level. And that was shown to me. And after I saw all of those things, it was like this, this, this energy of light was there to see how I, how I processed it. And when I processed it, I had this immense love. And then all of a sudden I ended up on this beach and the woman standing in front of me, talking to me telepathically, telling me, about why earth is what it is and why we suffer and what the whole purpose is of what, us being on earth and you know why she erased my memories and I asked her to do it and why I went through my pain in my childhood and they couldn't help me because I asked them not to interfere and all this information. And I, one question I had was, uh, why is all the suffering the way it is for humanity? And they said to me, malfunction in thinking. Humans don't use their consciousness in the right way. And I, I had no more questions. And I got to, to visit friends. I didn't know in heaven that you can race cars and fly. You can change your form to a male or female or to an energy or to a spark or to a sound wave. You can swim. You can go hiking. Everything you could imagine is there but nothing harms you. There's no pain. There's no death. There's no sorrow. There's just love and play like kids being in this, their own universe, their own heaven. I had my own heaven. All my friends I went to visit had their own heaven of how they saw it. And then we had community places where we created together. It was, and when I say, when I say how amazing it was, it wasn't like, some kind of spirit spirit thing. Like when you sat in a chair, you sat in a chair like you do here. Like you don't, there is no, when you fly, you feel yourself like you're flying like a bird, like fast, you know? So it wasn't like effervescent or anything. It was like real. If you like that video, you're going to love the next one. Click this thumbnail right here and I'll see you over there.